If you are looking for a standardized way to return errors from your API, then you have to know about the problem details standard. In this video, I'll show you how to implement problem details in ASP.NET Core, so let's dive in. Let's start with a simple example to illustrate the problem we are trying to solve. I have a simple use case here called create meeting, and as you can guess, it creates a new meeting inside of my application. The first precondition for creating a meeting is checking if the organizer specified in the request exists in our database, and if the organizer is null, we're going to throw an application exception. So let me test this out by starting the application, and I'm going to send a post request for creating a new meeting to my API, and then this is the response that we get back. And as you can see, the response contains the exception that I threw inside of my use case. So this is a custom application exception, and the message is that the organizer is not found. Now, this isn't particularly user-friendly for anyone consuming our API, because they have to go through the exception and figure out how to solve of the problem that we have here. And this is exactly why we introduced problem details to try to standardize the errors that we return from our API and make the responses more helpful for the consumers of our API. If this is the first time you are hearing about problem details, this is actually a standard and the initial version was RFC 7807 titled Problem Details for HTTP APIs. And it describes a format called a problem detail that we can use to describe errors in HTTP responses. Now, if you take a closer look, this RFC was actually made obsolete by a new one called RFC 9457, and if we go into that one, you will see that it's the exact same title. So this is also titled Problem Details for HTTP APIs. This RFC was actually released last year in July of 2023, and it just tries to extend the existing RFC, which was 7807. Now, let's actually focus on the important part, and that is the Problem Details JSON object. So this is what it looks like. There are a couple of members that are part of the Problem Details response. The first one is a type, which is a URI describing this error. Then there is a title, which should be a human readable explanation of what the problem is, along with a detail that contains more contextual information. You can also include an instance member, which is the URI of the current resource that we were trying to modify. And you also have the freedom to extend the response with any other contextual information that you want to introduce. You can go through the entire standard. I'm going to leave the link to this RFC in the description of this video, where you can check out the exact definitions for each of the members. And now let's go back into our application and see how we can approach implementing this. So we're going to start by handling this exception somehow. We have a couple of options inside of ASP.NET Core, and the most common approach is probably using a middleware. However, I'm going to show you a newer approach that we're going to extend a bit more. And I'm going to create a new type called the global exception handler. I'll make this an internal and sealed class because that's the coding convention that I prefer. And I have to implement this interface called the I exception handler. It only contains one method, which is called try handle async. So let me align the parameters vertically. And how the exception handler works is it gives us a chance to handle the exception that was provided as this argument. If we return true from the exception handler, then we're going to break the chain if there are multiple exception handlers, and we're going to return the API response. If we return false, then it means that we don't know how to handle this exception, and we're going to let another exception handler attempt to handle that. So what I want to do here is write a problem details response, but I'm actually going to start by setting a status code for my response. And you can access this through the HTTP context. And I'm going to do a switch on my exception type. And based on the exception type, I'm going to return a different status code. Now I have a status codes static class with a bunch of constants inside. And in the default case for my exception type, I want to return a 500 internal server error. And I can do that by accessing this constant on the status codes static class. But let's say if this is an application exception, like the one that we throw inside of the use case for creating a meeting, then I'm going to return a different exception, or rather status code, and this is going to be status 400 bad request. Now, what about the problem details? Well, here's how you can approach this. I can say await HTTP context response, and then I can write my response as a JSON document, and I can pass in an object that I want to write as a that I want converted into JSON. And this object is going to be problem details. So we already have this type 
inside of .NET, and we can use it to implement support for returning a problem details response. So you will see that we have these standard elements, like the type, the title, and the description. So let's say for the type, I use the exception. I can call the get type method and specify the name of the exception type. For the title, because this is a global exception handler, I'm going to say an error occurred. And then for the detail of the problem details response, I can return the exception message. So this is how we can implement a global exception handler and have it return a problem details response whenever we run into an exception. But how do we make this work inside of our API? We have to do two things. The first one is registering the global exception handler as a service, but we have to call the add exception handler method. And here I can specify the global exception handler type. And then the second thing I have to do is to introduce a middleware for exception handling. I'm just going to say app use exception handler. And to be able to use this with the default setup, I also have to provide a delegate for configuring the exception handler. So let's start the application again and let's place a breakpoint in the exception handler. I'm going to send another request to the API, which doesn't exist in the database. So if I click the send button, we're going to land on the breakpoint inside of the global exception handler. And if we take a look at the exception instance, it's an application exception saying that the organizer was not found. So we're going to proceed to set the status code and then we're going to write a problem details response and complete the API request. So I can hit continue and we're going to get back a response inside of Postman containing the problem details that we created inside of the exception handler. So this is a pretty basic way of how we can implement a problem details response, but let me show you a better approach that we can use. So back inside of my program file, I'm now going to omit this delegate because it won't be needed anymore because I'm going to introduce a set of services into my application. I'm going to say add problem details. And this is going to introduce a set of services that are used to create a problem details response for failed requests. So back inside of our global exception handler, I want to now inject a service. And this service is called the problem details service. Go figure, right? So let's see how we can use this. The problem details service has two methods, write async and try write async. Because we are returning a Boolean value from this method, why not go ahead and use try write async right away? And this accepts a problem details context. So let's see what we can set here. We can set additional metadata, the exception, the HTTP context, and the problem details instance. So let me await this. And we're actually going to return this value directly and later delete the code we had below. But let's reuse the things that we have inside. So we're going to set the HTTP context to the argument that we already have. We're going to do the same for the exception. And then for the problem details, I'm going to copy the instance that I'm initializing here. So there we go, now we have the problem details and we're also returning a Boolean value. So now we move the responsibility of writing the problem details response to the problem details service. So let's start the API again and let's check out the response that we get this time around. So let me send the same request to our API again with the implementation that's using our problem details service and you will essentially see that we are getting the same response back with the addition of a status field that's now respecting the value that we set in the status code of the response. So this is just a minor improvement, but let me show you how you can actually take this further to implement some cross-cutting concerns. Let's extend the problem details with the instance property, and I'm going to construct this using my HTTP context. And I'm going to specify the method used on the HTTP request, as well as the HTTP request path. And you will see what we're going to get in the response. Now, another thing that we can do on the problem details to introduce more context to the response is use the extensions property to create a dictionary of key value pairs. And here you can add any additional context that you want inside of the response. So let's say I want to add a request ID property in my response. I can create a key value pair and the value is going to come from the trace identifier on the HTTP context. This is actually the request ID. But let's say I'm using something like OpenTelemetry for distributed tracing, and I also want to have a trace ID present inside of my API responses. What I want to do is to be able to access the current activity instance. You can try accessing the activity class and then access the current activity. But another way you can achieve this is use the HTTP context and then you can access the features collection. And I want to look for the IHTTP 
activity feature. And if we get back an instance, I'm going to access the activity. So let's create a field to hold this value. This is going to be our activity. And then I'm going to use this to return a trace ID inside of my problem details response. And the trace ID is just going to be the activity ID. Of course, this is nullable, so I have to use the safe access operator. Now, if you know how telemetry works inside of ASP.NET Core, the activity ID is a complex object containing a root ID. So now if I'm using a distributed tracing system like Seek or the Aspire dashboard or Jaeger, I can use this trace ID from the problem details response to find the logs and traces for a particular API request and figure out what went wrong. So let me start the API and show you what the response looks like. So I'm going to send the same request again. And of course we get our problem details response this time containing the instance, which contains the request method and the URI where we send the requests, which is just the meetings endpoint. Then we have our request ID, which is specific to ASP.NET Core. And then we have a trace ID, which is a complex value. And the first value here is the root span ID, which we can use as the trace ID when filtering distributed traces. Now, if you want to set this up, all you need is just open telemetry. Here I'm configuring logging and tracing using the open telemetry library. I'm also adding HTTP client, ASP.NET Core, and MPG SQL instrumentation. And then I'm configuring an open telemetry exporter. In my Docker Compose setup, I'm just creating a seek instance using a Docker image, and then I'm configuring the environment variables to export open telemetry data to this endpoint on my seek instance, and I'm also specifying which open telemetry protocol to use. So with this setup in place, I can now go into seek and check out some additional information. So let's go ahead and send a request, and I'm going to get back this response. And I'm going to take this value from the trace ID. And now I can jump into the seek user interface. And from the seek user interface, I can apply a filter based on the trace ID value. And I'm going to specify the value from my problem details response. And now I can observe my distributed trace. So you can see I have a post request to the meetings endpoint and another trace here, which represents my database query. You can see the actual trace below containing the query that was sent to the database, but you can also see all of the structured logs present for this request. So this is how you can use problem details to make monitoring your API a bit easier. But what if you want to use multiple exception handlers inside of your application? For example, you want to handle different types of exceptions with different handlers. Then you would end up repeating this logic in most of your exception handlers. And there's actually a smarter way to approach this. So I'm going to copy this code and then delete it from here. We're going to go back to the previous implementation of our exception handler. And then what I want to do is add a delegate when I'm configuring the problem detail services. And what I can do here is set the customized problem details delegate. This gives me access to the problem details context, which is where I can apply my cross-cutting concerns when it comes to customizing the problem details response. From the problem details context, I can access the context and then the problem details and then I can access the instance property. This also contains the HTTP context, so we can update our previous reference, and this should work just the same. And then when it comes to the extensions, we can say context, problem details, extensions, and then add the key value pairs that we want to have inside. So I previously had the request ID, and then the value was the trace identifier from the HTTP context. For the trace ID, I use the activity feature from the current HTTP context, and we can actually get the same value, but we just have to replace the reference to the HTTP context. And then I can say context problem details extensions, and then add the trace ID, and I specify the activity ID as the value. And then we achieve the same behavior as before. So our response won't change, except we now have a way to customize all of the problem details responses that we generate inside of our application. And why is this important? So let's say I go into the get user use case, for example, and here I'm returning a not found response. If I were to update this to a problem or a validation problem response, then this response is going to be customized by my delegate. But there's an even more interesting way to achieve the desired result. So I'm going to go back to returning an empty not found response and I'm going to add another middleware into our request pipeline. And I'm going to add this middleware right after the exception handler. 
and the name of this middleware is status code pages. And what this is going to do is it's going to update my empty API responses like I have in the get user use case where I'm just returning an empty not found response. And if I send a request to the get user endpoint for a user that doesn't exist, now we're going to get a problem details response. And this is our two middleware working in combination. So we have the status code pages middleware producing a problem details response. And then we have our customizations that include the instance member, the request ID, and the trace identifier. Unfortunately, this only works for empty API responses. If I were to return a not found response with an error message, then this wouldn't produce the desired result and I'd have to create the problem details response myself. And if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to smash the like button that's going to be right below. Using the problem details service is a very nice way to return problem details responses from our application. We can integrate this into a global exception handler. This also works with middleware and we have a simple way to include this in the request pipeline by adding the exception handler middleware and also customize our problem details responses by providing a delegate for cross-cutting concerns like setting the instance and adding some extensions that are useful for diagnostics and monitoring like the request ID and the trace ID if you are using OpenTelemetry. If you want to learn two more best practices for returning API errors then you should watch this video next. Check out my courses to improve your software architecture skills and until next time stay awesome.